Okay, everyone. <coughs> Welcome back to this final session for SCT-102. So this revision lecture basically um, reviews the whole lecture of uh, the course, particularly uh, of the exam questions that we might expect and types of questions and maybe if you have any questions as well from this course, we will try to answer some of these questions. Okay? Do you remember the date for the exam? It's 14th of June 2017 and it's going to be at 1.30. So find the room number exactly and come at here at at least one o'clock, okay, half an hour before the exam. And maybe the Melbourne students at the same time. I mean, all the you know, all the campuses will have exam at the same time, okay. No, no, they will have to go in any of the campuses. Of course, of course. The online students will also be going to maybe if not our campus, maybe other university, but there has to be a supervisor there, okay? Someone will be monitoring the exam, okay? It's just like an exam hall. So every student will be supervised. And it's Darwin, one o'clock means 1.30 here, okay? Okay, study is, of course, the key point. Be confident, hard work, and good revision should put you in the this frame of mind so you can feel confident in the exam, okay? Whatever we did in the lecture and class, especially types of questions that we solved, particularly in the tutorial, would be very useful. So if you find similar type of questions, try to solve, okay? Not one or two. In the book, usually, there's one question, same another question, probably in the exercise and also in the problem, okay? So problem is a bit of difficult questions. You can expect questions more from the problems than exercise. But exercise and problem have similar types of structure. So for example, you are solving FIFA questions, LIFO questions, and weighted average questions, then solve both from exercise and also from the problem okay if you find another book that's also okay but what i want you need to have a good practice so that any types of questions that you find you are comfortable you don't feel that oh this is a foreign i don't know anything about this no that should not be the case good revision is the key point so even i don't know what is the day today 20 24 right so even after this class you'll have uh, i think still more than uh, around three weeks time for the exam right 14th is the exam and today is 25th so you can say roughly three weeks of time i would be uh, i'm not sure how about the, your other exam structure but you need to put a good amount of time with this best is find a group and solve together okay find a group study here or wherever you want in our next to our another library that we have Last semester, students went to the library from 10 to 10, from morning 10 until 10 o'clock. They studied together, they solved together. If one is stuck, the other one is helping. So you need to find a team that can help you each other, okay? Find the right answers and then, because you may not find the right solution at the same time, but three of you are doing. So if two of you have the right solution or maybe same solution, that means it must be the correct, okay? The other one can learn from other things. You need to have a different day plan for this uh, for because your exam might be next day you might have another exam. I'm not sure. Uh, business management, when is the exam? Final exam. Yeah, final exam. Accounting is, Accounting is the last one. Okay, so before that you have a other exam as well. And you need to prepare for those exams as well. So you need to have a plan. It's not like that you give one week exam, next week another one. I'm not sure. Sometimes in maybe next semester or other semester you find the next day, okay, today you have one exam, next day you have another exam. You have to prepare, right? So we, we, have a, we need to have a plan for this. Reading the question is very important. Many, many mistakes comes actually students don't read the question carefully. They just see the FIFA questions, but or there may be questions comes from the inventory, but didn't read whether I asked for FIFO or LIFO or weighted average. For example, in the depreciation method, did I ask them to use 1.5 method or I asked them to use double of, for example, for reducing balance method, double of a straight line. They don't read carefully and whatever they already practice, they just put it there, okay? That's why reading the questions, same here, the one that we did today in the partnership as well, three to five, maybe make another, 
they did all calculation correct, but the ratio they read it wrong. Three is to five, they read probably two is to three, something else. Okay, it's because they are in hurry and they don't read the questions. Whenever you read the questions, the important information always highlight. Okay, that's what I used to do. Always highlight the information that I need to focus this information. I can't forget this from information. Okay, if you keep this one highlighting, that will come to your mind whenever you're reading for the first time questions. So read the questions carefully, then stay on track going off on unwanted uh, tangents and it's notorious time waster. I want to do this one or this one, which one I shall do first, this one or that one. You need to have a plan because the most of the questions I'm already telling that the chapters that comes from the question. So you can plan ahead, okay, I'll be starting with depreciation first. Doesn't matter whatever the questions, the format is coming or maybe it doesn't matter, I can start with inventory, I can go to the next chapter, I can go to the next. Any order is fine, but if you have a plan, good plan, okay, depreciation, I'm good at depreciation, so I start with depreciation. I'm good at partnership, okay, I start with the partnership. Once you can solve a question with solid, 100%, with confidence, that will actually boost your confidence in the exam, that will help you to solve other questions. But if you're stuck on the first question and confused and can't answer, I'm not sure whether it's okay or not, what will I do, okay, then the one that you already know might be making mistake again because of the tense that you already grow, right? So the best strategy is the uh, childhood strategy that we always tell, start with the best topic first, okay? Answer every question, set this as a goal for every exam you sit, you must answer all the questions because if you leave a question blank, there's no way that you can give any mark, zero, right? Absolutely zero. But if you write something, where there is goals here and there, if you can see the effort is there, maybe there may be one mark, two mark, even though you didn't write or you didn't complete the whole questions. So at least you need to have a plan that I will answer all the questions and you have a plenty of time, okay? For this, this class exam, you'll have enough time if you can, I mean, allocate it properly. It's not something rocket science, it's very easy exam, but you need to plan accordingly. Last semester also I saw the students couldn't complete the whole exam. And without any reason because they wasted time on some particular questions, okay? So from the experience. Work out time allocation for each question first um, and don't fall in love with the question, it will not love you back, okay? This is an important. If you just keep uh, trying to solve one question and one question and not finding and spending time on again and again, it's just waste, okay? Leave that one, go to the next one, that will help you. It's going to be three hours exam, okay? And it's worth 50% of the final grade. Last semester there was another sentence that you have to have 50% in the final exam, but that sentence is removed now. So you need overall 50%. But again, if you are looking for only overall 50%, then you might fall into it again. Look for something good, okay? I expect that every student from this class uh, at least more than 65% marks, okay? More than 65% is should be easy and at least some of you should get higher distinction as well. Check the exam day, time and venue and what you can bring to the exams is only pencil, eraser and calculator. Huh? Pen, uh, you can bring, yes. But if preferable is if you can write it in pencil and some people, yeah? No, you can, you can. It's because if you make a mistake, you can erase it and then you can do the correction. So usually people in this country and many other countries actually, they follow the pencil, okay? <coughs> Your pro calculator has to be non-programmable and most importantly, you cannot take calculator from other students and you can't use your mobile phone as a calculator. What is non-programmable? Non-programmable, the one that you usually use, this one, like uh, yeah, scientific calculator that you say that you cannot enter the uh, alphabet, okay, alphabet, you can't enter the alphabet. You cannot use this one? You can use, you can use this one, okay. Okay, uh, calculator must be non-programmable, no exception, this is important. Uh, cheap, uh, basic calculator from Kmart and other stuff, that <laughs> that's the, $10, $15 calculator is going to be your sufficient for the exam. Okay, okay. now, most important one. Uh, the question is going to be MCQ, 20 questions, and that's going to be from chapter uh, 6 to chapter 11 plus partnership, okay? So we're excluding chapter 12. 
because we didn't cover that chapter. There will be five questions and each question is going to be 16 mark, okay? I told probably several times in the class. Question one is from retail inventory. Question two is from chapter 10, non-current asset. Question three is from chapter 13, partnership. Question four is from internal control and I mean chapter eight and chapter nine. And finally, question five is going to be from chapter 11. So basically, except chapter uh, seven, there is a question from every chapters. Okay, we don't have question from chapter seven, but there will be many MCQ from chapter seven. Is that okay? More MCQ question will be coming from chapter seven. That's why you didn't have any calculation from chapter seven. You still have to read the chapters for understanding, but for calculation, uh, you have to focus on other chapters. Is that okay? Yeah. MCQ for practice, probably I don't have practice. Okay, you need to read the book and uh, try to solve the questions that have the book have already, and answers are already in our uh, every tutorial has the answer. Okay. So that should be, should not be a problem. Hmm? Okay, maybe I can uh, send this slide to everyone. So, these are the questions that suggested question. Okay, does not guarantee that the exam questions are going to be set from here, definitely no. But if you solve, all of these questions, you are more likely to be okay for 85% questions, okay? 85% of the questions are coming from these uh, similar types of questions from here. Chapter six have some questions, chapter seven, no question. Chapter seven, I put only few questions. Chapter nine and chapter 10, 11, and you see. So if you are solving this chapter, the red font questions, actually, if you just want to pass, okay, just want to pass, then if you focus on red font questions, then you will be fine. But if you are looking for distinction, then you need to solve all these questions. And if you are looking for HD, including this question, you need to answer or you need to study all tutorial questions, okay? Most of the tutorial questions you have to solve or you should be able to solve. So that will help you uh, to get the HD. In the, in the final exam and again this is just suggestion does not guarantee you it's just to give you an idea that you need to practice the types of questions that we are expecting in the exam uh, it would be like this or similar kind of this <coughs> any question with this this is going to be well we can we can go to the next slide yes <laughs> any question with this, any question with the exam or formatting or anything? No, right? So let's start with the chapter six. Whatever you studied, I'm just going to review, not definitely going to uh, solve any questions. If you have a, a FIFO, we studied LIFO and weighted average method, right? So you definitely need to know how to calculate. Very simple. If it is FIFO, then first in, first out. If it is LIFO, last in first out weighted average so the technique for weighted average is the problematic many students made a mistake you can note it that i need to be very very 100 percent on weighted average method of calculating the inventory is that okay so we have to be uh, very expert in this so basically the question type might be uh, you might be asked to calculate net profit even from here and let's say, or maybe gross profit, or you might be given some information, then we'll be asked, okay, calculate the net profit. First of all, to calculate the net profit, you need to know the gross profit, okay? How do I know the gross profit? I need to know sales revenue. So sales revenue, you need to calculate sales revenue. And then sales revenue minus what? To calculate the gross profit, sales revenue minus? Very good, cost of goods sold. That cost of goods sold is coming from, from where? from this chart that we studied, okay? You had a inventory, inventory, and whatever you are selling, ending inventory column is there, and cost of goods sold column is also there. So you'll be getting the cost of goods sold from there, and if you already have a sales revenue, then you can deduct sales revenue minus 
cost of goods sold to get the gross profit. And if you I give you other expense, you just deduct that expense and then you get the net profit. Is that clear? So these types of questions, I, I mean in chapter 6 basically we have uh, only FIFO, LIFO and weighted average. You have to be fluent in all these three methods. Selling price of the uh, selling price of the product also can be different in different times. Okay, so you need to calculate in that case sales revenue separately, or if it is one price for all the selling or uh, selling units, then you just need to multiply with the selling price with the number of units that we sold. Then you get the sales revenue. So using the FIFO, LIFO, C, if you have the this one. This column is important that we need to know cost of goods sold, okay? And if I don't know the cost of goods sold, if there's a mistake, there's a huge penalty. I mean, it's going to be so much deduction because it's very easy calculation. Average cost method is very important because uh, many students made mistakes here when you're transforming from this side to this slide, I mean this column, this row, how the 58 is coming, so you have to know how do you calculate this one, okay? Bank reconciliation, there will be question as well from bank reconciliation, I mean, uh, that we solve. So you know that bank reconciliation, you know already in the exam whether your answer is matching or not, is it correct or not, because your book balance and your bank balance should be same at the end of the bank reconciliation. If it is not coming same, that means there is something wrong in your calculation, you need to figure it out, okay? You can start with either book balance or you can start with uh, any of this, book balance, bank balance, adjust. If you can remember my tricks that I told in the class, that would be good as well. Whenever you see the transaction, uh, give, a, give a sign, it belongs to the bank or it belongs to the book. If it is plus or it is negative. So if you can go by uh, all the transition, you should be fine. So bank reconciliation example is here. Need to have a practice and uh, from the book and also I think I give one sheet the students who came to the past session, they also have the good practice with that one. So bank reconciliation, after the bank reconciliation, there is a bad debt. There will be question also from bad debt as well. We have studied these two methods. One is called allowance method. Another one is called direct write-off method, right? In the allowance method, there is two. One is what? Who can tell? Allowance method also has two methods for calculating. For good. Allowance method has two. One is percentage of sales method, another one is aging method, okay? Percentage of sales, so you need to be familiar with both types of method of calculating accounts receivable and also direct write of method. And then uh, maybe similar types of questions that we have solved in the tutorial. In the allowance method, this is the amount that we estimate and in direct write of method, that is bad debt already happened, okay? Is the event, the actual amount of bad debt. Okay, so let's go with this. Percentage of sales that we have studied, so you need to be familiar with this aging methods as well. The one that we did, simple one, uh, you need to know only the calculation because the month is already, date is given, and the percentage is also given. So if they give you the amount, you just multiply with the percentage that is given, right? And then you'll be able to get how much is expected bad debt or estimated bad debt by using this method. Writing bad debts also might be a question. For example, when we are actually writing off the bad debt using the allowance method, we don't write bad debt accounts debit. Okay, many students make the same mistake. They write direct write off method, but we will be using allowance for bad debt is going to be debit and accounts receivable is going to be credit. Depreciation, definitely all three methods is going to be, I mean, you have to be, uh, it's very easy one. Straight line, you need to re remember, 
the depreciation does not change over the time. It's the same depreciation, right? Same amount of depreciation. Units of production depends on how much production that we did in that particular year and my depreciation is going to be based on that. Reducing balance method initially is going to be very high and then it's going to be low, okay? So at some point of time we can give uh, that, okay, we sold the asset at the middle of third year or at the end of the third year, okay? Then the question might be whether they made gain or losses from this asset. So you are calculating, you are calculating for five years or three years or whatever, but if I sell this asset at the end of third year or at the end of the fourth year, then what could be the profit or loss for this asset by using three different methods? So this kind of questions also is solved uh, in the class, but you need to have a more practice on this. So this one, reduce balance method, already told in the class, is going to be double declining balance method. It's not going to be 1.5, it's not going to be using the formula as well, it's going to be what? Double of straight line method. Is that okay? Anyone remembers how to calculate double of straight line method? If the useful life of asset is five years, then what is going to be the depreciation rate by using reducing balance method? Exam is three weeks away. If the useful life of asset is five years, what is the rate of depreciation if we use the reducing balance method? into two, what is the percentage? 40%, very good, right? We need to divide 100 divided by number of useful years, five, there's going to be 20 multiplied by two, there's going to be 40% of reducing balance method. So you only need to know that amount, uh, the useful life of the asset. And based on this, we'll be able to calculate the percentage. Okay. Warranty also very important that comes with our uh, current liabilities chapter and payroll. So you need to calculate the estimated warranty payable and how much is the uh, actual warranty that you paid, how much money you will be reporting in income statement, how much money you will be reporting in the balance sheet. And payroll is also similarly important. You will have one question, 10 marks with warranty and another six marks with payroll probably something like this or maybe equal. So you need to answer the question from payroll as well. So in one question, there is a two part. One part goes to the warranty, another part goes to the payroll. This one is of course the one that we did today, this partnership, okay? So in the partnership, how you are distributing the profit among the partners, journal entry mostly, and if there is any admission in the business during their, uh, during their tenure of the business, how much the contribution that he is doing and what will be his capital, okay? So these types of questions, the one that we solved today in the tutorial would be enough. And of course, if you follow the, my, the previous slide, that's going to be enough to pass the course. So this is how we calculate this, okay? Paul and Karen, we did today. Any question? Any question, yes? Many questions, okay. Let's start with the first. No, any question from the slide? Right now, I don't have Any question from the slide? Any question regarding the exam? Any question? No? Okay. If no question, then um, we all will be going to office chairs. Okay, level 11 uh, for a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes in the computer room. Okay, and we'll do the survey together. Yeah. So, oh, I didn't record this. So, you have received the mail, right, for surveying? Have you received? How many of you received? Everyone received actually. Email. Email? Yeah. <laughs> How did you do? 